Well, joining us now here on the Rita Cosby Show is Adam Thompson. He's a New York City-based criminal defense attorney. And Adam, what's your reaction to uh, the old college records coming out here? I think it's much to do about nothing, Rita. I think, you know, listen, just think in perspective to your own life. I know, having gone through law school, taking so many dozens of classes, that I might have gotten A's in them, B's in them, C's in them. But I could tell you one thing. The classes I got A's in, I don't remember every single thing that a professor taught me or every single fact that I learned. So now, I, let, now let me play devil's advocate. Is it fair game because this is such a significant point in the case? And it sounds like the class was focused a lot on uh, self-defense, stand your ground, that that was a big focus of it. So is it fair game to say, well, in this case, he should have remembered and he's a neighborhood watch guy? Well, I don't think, number one, it should have been admissible. I think it's beyond the scope of what the facts are in this case and what's relevant. And I think the defense made an excellent argument this morning when they said it's irrelevant and doesn't go to show anything relating to Zimmerman's state of mind at the time that the incident took place and he shot Mr. Martin. That's what's critical in this case. Although, you know, and, and now listen, and I, I agree with you that that is the um, appropriate standard. The question is, do you think the jury will also hear, well, he got out of the car, he wasn't supposed to. He followed, he wasn't supposed to. Um, the mother, it sounds like, is going to hit the stand at some point, Trayvon Martin's mother, and she's going to get up there and say, I'm sure that's my son's voice on that 911 call, screaming and begging for help. So, so could, even if... If, and, and the statute is, and it's fascinating, Adam, I, I, you know, I think it's so interesting to hear sort of the way the law is. The law is in Florida is that if he was worried for his life and if he was worried for great bodily harm, then stand your ground, you know, and self-defense applies as opposed to sort of, you know, just randomly thinking, what would you do in that case if he had a reasonable reason? So they have to kind of get in his head. Well, that's why this is so important. The case ultimately, with all these things that we see going on, 90% of them are probably irrelevant. This is all going to come down to who is the initial aggressor, and at the time that the incident went down, what was George Zimmerman's state of mind? Okay, so now if you say the initial aggressor, you could make the case that he got out of the car. I'm not saying, you know, I still, you know, there's obviously two sides to the story, but he got out of the car. I, don't, I see. I but don't think not it's not illegal, Rita. Uh, but I don't think it's not the initial. See, I don't think it's the initial aggressor. I think it's who, what happened at that moment at the fight. I don't even think it's the initial aggressor. I don't think that. I don't think that that's relevant. Even though I think that will certainly impact the jury's mind when they go and deliberate. I think it's what happened. At that moment that the two of them are fighting, well, did George Zimmerman correct. fear for almost nothing before that? You know, even even if, you know, I mean, obviously it's going to go into their mind, but really what matters, did he really worry for his life at that moment? That's correct. And that's actually what the law is. All these things leading up to the previews, you know, was he allowed to follow him? Yeah, it's not illegal. There's nothing illegal saying George Zimmerman couldn't follow him. Now, so now, 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 now what about the pictures? So what about the pictures, Adam? Okay, so now here's where I think yesterday's testimony, I do think, helps the prosecution. And I don't think it's, I think, I think right now they got an uphill battle. I agree that I think the case looks very good for George Zimmerman. But those pictures, you have the person coming out yesterday, the medical examiner saying, it looks like a few scratches. She called it quote, insignificant injuries. <laughs> if I'm the jury, I'm going to go, wait a minute, the guy was shot and the other guy had a few insignificant injuries. Is that a fair fight? Let me tell you something, Rita. That was a hack expert witness they put on the stand. But the pictures don't lie. Adam, and- Adam, the pictures don't lie. That's right. The pictures don't lie. And the pictures and to me... The pictures, the- he had a severely bl- bloody nose. I don't, you know what? Black can, I t- can I tell you, Adam? I, and I haven't punched anybody ever in the nose, but if I punched you, I promise you, and I may not even be a good shot, your nose would bleed all over the place. Your head bleeds a lot. Your nose bleeds a lot. Sure. But the pictures indicate he had two blackened eyes. He had a broken nose, not just a punch in the nose, but what appeared to be a fracture. He had two lacerations in the back of his head small that cuts. were bloodied small and cuts. consistent with Adam, a blunt small impact. Cuts. Wait, let me finish. Small cuts. You with know a what? Blunt impact from being hit on the concrete. Yeah, now, but, all right. Now, i got to interrupt you because the witnesses, even the ones that were good for the defense, said... Maybe that he was on the bottom, but they didn't see him being repeatedly hit. Again, this is all his, 
his you know testimony. Adam, unfortunately, we got to go, but I, I love uh, debating with you. You got to come back on again. I, think I love it, Rita. Let's go for round two. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come in the ring with me. I'll get. I'll throw that punch at your nose, Adam. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's great to have you on. Um, what?